This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Hello, this is the Hard Fried Podcast. That's Michael Combs. That's Mike Martin. And Keith Clanton. Hello. How's your mama and am, y'all? We are back with episode 18 of our Queer Horror Series. You can give this season's complete movie listing a peep over at the Horror Five Podcast on Instagram. And be sure to catch up on previous episodes or every you get your favorite podcast. I have a question for y'all. Yes. Okay. So, have you ever directed an erotic thriller based on a series of grisly attacks on gay pornographic actors in hopes to win back the love of a film editor you so desperately desire? Back in my cruising days. In no. 19, <laughs> in 1979? Yeah. Well, you're in luck. Let's sit a spell and discuss Knife and Heart. Laisse-moi venir chez toi. Anne, say tell me name. J'ai le cœur sac de toi. Vous savez quand on s'oublie avec l'autre Les autres, qu'on sait plus où on est, une forme d'amour en quelque sorte. Puissant, vorace, sans limite. Ça vous est jamais arrivé Votre acteur a été poignardé, une mort particulièrement violente. Carl venait de tourner dans un de mes films. Quel genre de film exactement Oh, arrêtez votre charme. Faites pas le coup des types qui sont pas renseignés. T'es un super beau mec, tu sais. Vous faites quoi Je suis productrice de films érotiques. La seule chose, c'est que parfois on manque de filles, alors on fait ça entre mecs. Tu appelles moi demain matin Détective Rachid, j'écoute. Je crois que je vais changer le titre du film. Le tueur au mot. Vous en dites quoi Tu me trompes ou tout ça te fait ni chaud ni froid ah Alors comme ça, vous n'avez aucune piste Vous attendez que tous mes acteurs crèvent pour vous mettre au boulot Personne ne veut tourner avec nous, ils sont tous terrifiés. Il y a bien un indice. Près des deux premiers cadavres, on a retrouvé des plumes du même oiseau. plus attentive à tes rêves. Ils sont là pour t'aider. C'est cet amour qui est trop pour moi. Ça me rend dingue, tu comprends Knife and Heart was released in 2018. It was written and directed by Jan Gonzalez and stars Vanessa Paradis, Nicholas Mori, Kate Moran, and Jonathan Genet. Michael. Yes. Kick us off on our journey. Y'all, this is going to be a journey because there is a lot. A lot in this movie. Well, if you think this is a journey, try watching it and taking notes and paying attention. <laughs> It's I a think, lot. I'm pretty sure I paused it. Oh, I'm going to say most. a minimum of 15 times because I was like, okay, hang on a goddamn minute. <laughs> I need to collect myself. Yes, it was a lot. It is. Luckily, I, this was my third or fourth viewing, so I kind of had an idea what was going on. Yeah, great. Um, so the movie opens, to which is clearly a 16 millimeter film of two boys kissing, having sex, and someone watching them from the woods. And licking trees. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't lick trees? I have never thought, hey, I'm out here cruising. Let's lick a tree and see if I attract you. You wanted to lick that wood. I mean, I guess. I mean, symbolism, I guess. But yeah. if I was, if I caught two dudes in the woods, my first thought is not going to be to lick the Let tree. Let me lick this tree. No. I'm going to try to make myself known. I mean, yeah. I figured you two would love this beginning, the way you guys talk about boys. So I didn't say I didn't love it. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> um, so then we then see one of the boys from the film dancing in a club to Malaria's Thrash Me. Some masked guy is watching him and rubbing his dick. Yes, he is. Um, and he's clearly turned on by him watching him. If I saw some guy in a mask, 
I don't think it would. Well, uh, no. I think they were in some sort of like BDSM bar too. Yeah, because people are like kind of just fucking and doing stuff. Well, this is Paris, nineteen seventy nine. They're a little more freer. Uh, yes, they are. But I do think it was one of those like maybe a fetish bar because, I mean, obviously our one guy he has his. I mean, it looks like a BDSM mask. Like it's a le- It looks like a black leather mask. But there are some people that look like. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. If you were to just say, oh, yeah, it's finished bar, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I believe Just it. like because in leather chaps. And yes. Like, chains. I think I saw some chains on somebody. And kind of like, like harnessy things. Yes, this yes. isn't a normal gay bar. Yes. This is not Play Dance Club. I don't know. I, and y'all might not even remember this movie, but when they showed the dude like leaning against the wall with the mask on, it reminded me of the man in the iron mask. Never watched and, it. Mm-hmm. Okay, well... Joke's dead. Sorry. Go ahead. Wait, what, what movie is <laughs> The Man in the Iron Mask? Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, Leo. When did that come out? God, late 90s. 90s. Yeah, late 90s. Oh. But. Is his, it a horror movie? No. Oh. No. But that's what The Mask, like, reminded me of. Oh, okay. But yeah. So, The Mask Guy leaves, and Porn Boy, who we find out later his name is Carl, follows him outside. Carl's such a pretty name, too. Right? In between the next scenes, Carl's porn videos interspersed between the footage of them running at each other into, I guess, an alley or whatever it is. Of course. Outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just got, like, um, you know when they're, are they kissing? I mean, at one point, it's just, like, them two really close, and I feel like they're kissing Well, he goes something. to kiss, and then Mask Dude turns him around. Okay, well, I just got, like... <laughs> this is so stupid. But I was watching it, like, I would love to see this scene played out with Angela Lansbury singing Beauty and the Beast in the background. Oh, my <laughs> God. Why? I don't oh, know. with just the mask, the mask and, like... And, like, he's supposed to be this beautiful little twink. I don't know. It was funny to me. So we then have a quick next scene of Lois editing the porn video. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this not going on pretty much? It's like we're watching two scenes at the same time, y'all. So she's editing the porn video. She's a porn editor that Carl is in. And then it's going back and forth between that and him at the spa. There's a lot of that in this movie. There's a lot of that. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, I didn't love that. But, you know. Um, It just makes it very hard to keep up with. When you're trying to read dialogue. You know. I almost feel like I would have... I'm sorry, I'm like talking a whole lot. (laughs) I almost wish I could have watched it dubbed versus... Because there's a lot of dialogue. I almost wish I could have watched it dubbed so I wouldn't have to pay as much attention to like... The the subtitles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so Mask Guy has uh, tied up Carl to a bed, stomach side down. He t- tears Carl's undies off and gags him and then pulls a dildo out of his pants. Now look, <laughs> y'all already know, out of the three of us, I'm probably the one that's most um, sexually forward let's with just, my, you would have loved that. my dialogue. Honest. I feel You're like the most experienced with some big dildos. Let's just go ahead and say I, it. <laughs> No, that oh. dildo was too big. I mean, it wasn't that big. Uh, I mean, I'm not big. even talking. I'm not talking about the dildo. He would have had me as soon as he ripped those underwear off the way. I feel he like did. that would have hurt too, though. Well, I mean, clearly, just I mean, he ripped those snapped. things. You'd have thought they were Velcro. Yeah, yeah. Like they just like whoop, they were just gone. But well, I will say, when I watched it, I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I mean, I was there for it, and then I wasn't. You know. Here in a second. <laughs> so <laughs> you were there until you, you quickly changed your mind. Yes. Like, oh, this looks. Oh no, never mind. Never yeah, mind. got it. Oh. So what happens to him, Michael? Oh well, I didn't put that in my notes because I thought we talked about it. Oh okay, well. We, so um, this is no ordinary <laughs> dildo. dildo. No, no, this isn't the run of the mill dildo. This dildo has a retractable blade in it, which. When I saw it and you watch the scene, you don't see Carl being stabbed, right? So I thought to myself, is he stabbing him in the back? Or are they just going to go real graphic with it and he's like actually stabbing him in the ass? 
but it doesn't show that. Mm-hmm. And you don't find out until later after the cops come, which I'm sure we'll get to. Yep. But you find out later that he was actually stabbed in the ass. Mm-hmm. So he was essentially Ugh. raped. With a knife. Well, do you want to say raped? I mean, he was He was raped. Much, yeah, he was. He I mean, was, he wasn't stabbed in the cheeks. He was stabbed in, in the, the rectum. Ass, yes, mm-hmm. he was stabbed in the ass. And I wasn't sure at first if these piggy noises were from him or the killer. Obviously, it's the killer. Like, yeah. Because it comes up again. But the killer sounds like a little piggy, which makes sense because they're in a BDSM bar. So, right. <laughs> like, oh is oink, this oink. what he's into? No, it wasn't like oink oink. It was like, I mean, I'm not going to do it. But... <laughs> oh, poor Carl. Okay. So we are then introduced to Anne, who is running through a tunnel in Paris. Yeah, that's in 1970. Worth mentioning. That's literally the opening. Because yes. it shows the opening credits. And yes. I was I was like, oh, okay. That's well, how we open this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's Paris, 1979. She makes her way to a payphone and calls Lois. Anne has had a nightmare. Anne is delusional. Okay. She's a lot. Here's my first impression of her. She is delusional. Obviously an alcoholic, right? She's calling Lois, who... I guess I don't really flat out say it, but obviously, like, after some dialogue, you're like, oh, it's okay, a lesbian. this Lesbians. is a couple. Or they were a couple. And I just think to myself, this was, must have been a really bad breakup, or maybe something was going on beforehand. Lois just seems very smart. She's very pretty. She just I wants to edit her very, porn video. Like, yeah, she's artistic. She's very calm. Like, the total opposite. Who's a mess. Of Anne. Anne's a mess. Yes, a fucking. Do you think mess. she's a mess because of the breakup, or do you think she's a mess? Well, I think overall, she, I think she's a mess overall. But I think it's exasperated because it. Lois has left her, right? So I feel like maybe she had a drinking problem mm-hmm. and oh. was a little messy. Lois said deuces, and then it like catapulted her into full fledged crazy, crazy, yeah. Well, Anne does love a bottle of whiskey. I mean, we don't get any scenes of Anne prior. Now, this is how we are introduced to Anne, who is the star of the film. Um, Star's a stretch, but... Well, she is. She's she's the the female lead. She's the main character. There's a couple lines here I like, She's our final girl. There's a couple lines in this scene that I like, because Anne says to Lois, caress me with your voice, which I thought was sweet. And then Lois says, my heart has gone dry. I will say this. Well, Anne's character is crazy. I think that actress actually did a really good job. Like, I wasn't ever like, okay, calm down, girl. Like, you're taking it too far. You know, like in some of these horror movies. She actually, I think, portrayed a lovesick, delusional woman pretty pretty well. I, I want to add real quick that this is Johnny Depp's ex-girlfriend, mm-hmm. Vanessa Paradis. They had a kid together, Lily Rose Depp. I'm sure you've heard that name or listeners have. That's... His. Well, she's They've much had a kid more together. talented than Amber. Let's shit in a bad herd. <laughs> I agree. So. I agree. So, we then see a guy named Archie directing a new porn scene with three undeclad boys dancing together. Anne walks in, and we learn that she is the boss. She's the boss. Mm-hmm. So, is she the director? I feel like... Because, she owns the production company well, or the, whatever the, it is. Well, the reason I ask is because later on when like she's watching her movie, her name pops up. So I took it as, okay, maybe the, maybe she's like technically the director. And I think so. Archie's like her right, assistant hand-manned. director slash... He's probably just like a, a, a PA. I think Anne was on a bender and he just jumped Kinda in to over. help. Yeah. I will say when Anne walks in and that like dark green trench coat, I was like, okay... She might be crazy, but she looks like a boss walking with in her there. sunglasses on. Yeah, she yeah. looked really fierce. We one also, of my, one, I'm sorry, that's just one of my favorite looks. I think we've in this whole shebang of movies we've watched first season two. I think, I think she looks so fierce in that one scene. I think there's a lot of stylistic things from this movie, but that's what I expect from a Giallo film to begin with. 
but yeah, there's a lot more about Giallo. We can talk about like I can't wait to talk about some of this shit that happens. Um, because <laughs> y'all know I'm not a big fan of Giallo movies. No, you are not. No, I'm not. Except for Tenebrae, but that's like the one exception. Um, Archie sniffs those undies. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Is it Terry? Terry rips his he underwear takes off, the, and it's the, Archie's the yellow undies. I think. Yes. Sorry, I must have been taking notes at that time. <laughs> Yes. Is this one we're introduced to? Um, well, the next scene is Anne goes to, I think, which adult. is a developing yes. room and looks through a peephole to spy on Lois as she's editing. I like that scene because when it goes into the editing it's room, the it's mouth. like all those faces that goes into the mouth, which I thought was kind of cool. Yes. It is a little, it's a little creepy though. It's like, very psycho It's very psycho. Like she's, which it makes sense because you think, okay, maybe Anne is a little into like voyeurism, which is directing porn is a great job for her exactly well i mean at this point because i I mean obviously we knew that clearly there's a history with lois and Anne, but i didn't know at that point that they were like working together like i hadn't picked up on the fact that she was the director i guess yet yeah, yeah, at this point, Lois was editing. The yeah, like so when she went and was watching, I was like, "Oh, so they're like they like work together." Yeah. Yes, but then again, it adds to the like the conversation they have at the beginning because I thought to myself, "Well, damn, no wonder Lois thinks you are crazy. You got a fucking peephole, like, right?" Like it's a little creepy. And see, y'all went psycho with it, and I went Porky's. So, well, oh, same thing. Porky's. <laughs> Look. <laughs> They were both doing it for the same reason, let's be honest. Exactly. Um, So, a threesome scene is being filmed, and we are introduced, as Mike said, to the mouth of gold. (laughs) That poor guy. I know. I mean, I I don't know if I should say that, because he seemed to really... Uh, He loves his job. (laughs) I was like... He uh, likes his job. Would you like that job, Mike? Uh, Look, if if I'm going to be... He's not getting paid for it. Remember... Because that they does bring come that up, up a little later on about being yes. paid. And he is doing Well, this. he's getting paid and come, but... Ugh. I mean, look, I've done worse for nothing. So... <laughs> so I, this wouldn't bother but, you? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like all these people in her movies, though, look like a bunch of heroin addicts. Which, one of them is... What's his Terry. name? Terry. Now it was like Terry. Yeah, I mean, T- I guess it's pronounced. It's Terry, pronounced like Terry, that, yeah. but it's well, the French. Well, he's obviously a heroin addict because that's why yes. he can't get it up. Um, but I mean, they look. Like now, I wouldn't have been going for that cop guy though. Which I mean, obviously, the older gentleman. Yeah. Well, he's probably been doing these movies forever. I mean, clearly he probably oh, has. Jose, the yeah, something. Yeah, he wasn't Jose. I think he's probably been doing these for a long time. He's like. I mean, they don't really talk about them all that much, but I just assume like when you have all these younger guys and then there's an older guy, and that older guy's probably been doing this He's for seasoned. A while. They need a yeah. daddy type or something. He's well known. Yes. Um, the mouth of gold. Mouth of gold. What do they call those? Um, fluffers. Fluffer. Fluffers. Yeah. Yes. The mouth of gold is the fluffer. Because I've always heard, um, God, what was I watching? I don't remember what it was, but it was about you know making gay porn and there's some straight men that work in the porn industry that do gay porn and their girlfriends are the would fluffers come on set and like they'd have alone time before they would do a scene so they could get aroused and then others just took a little blue pill so i was gonna I say i feel like they just pop me. viagra but yeah well now <laughs> yeah so quaaludes. why wouldn't you they might have taken some quaaludes in the 70s Does that make you hard no but it relaxes you Hello, they're taking penises in their butts. <laughs> Anne and Archie go for a drive, and we see the first of many, I'm going to call it X-ray type films that are interspersed throughout the movie. And this one is particularly of a bird, a barn on fire, and then some guys. Well, honestly, the barn on fire and the guys, that's repetitive. That happens like over and over and over and over again. But this was our first introduction, introduction to the to bird, that. right? Yeah. Yes. Which to me just looked like a crow. I thought it was. I thought it was a crow. Which will. Oh, I knew it was a grackle. Uh, I'm kidding. I was <laughs> okay. like, what? But you've also seen this movie three times. So we're just going to say. Right now it looks like a little crow. 
I I'm it. gonna I'm gonna be that girl from the birds that is like there's a difference between crows and blackbirds and ravens. Okay, but did you really know? Like, okay, let's just say the first. No, I did not. Oh my god, that is uh, Shaladre Crackle. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like the dad in Beetlejuice that like sits there oh gosh, like with his little with his little book, book of birds. <laughs> yeah. I do have a few bird books, so. I'm sure you do. You got them all at estate sales, no less, I'm I, sure. I did. <laughs> um, These poor old ladies dying all over Middle Tennessee, and Michael's going to buy their bird books. Hey, it's better than the, the landfill. Oh, well, true. Um, Anne and Archie go for a drive to the gravel pit and recruit a new star. It's funny because when they showed the gravel pit, my first thought was, oh, well, this looks like a really good place to go recruit. And then I was like... Oh, that's what she's doing. <laughs> exactly what she, she knew what she was doing. But like some of these guys are very like macho. Like she is very sure of herself to just walk up and be like, "Hey, so um, I make movies and I can pay you this much. Do you want to do it?" It's boy on boy, and he's like, "Oh no," and she's like, "Okay, well, here's an extra bill." This, she's just like got this charm bill. about her, like. I bet she could have talked to any of those men and into talked him into it. You know, she's like a natural. Obviously. Well, this is where we. It's radio. not porn. It's uh-huh. blue movies. Blue movies. Yes. Blue movies. I mean, I feel like. I mean, I, it's still relevant today. I mean, dudes are gay for pay, so yes. it's just kind of one of those things. So I I feel like I'm not surprised, especially when a woman is the one that's going up to the masking. Like, that they would be more... Well, yeah, because I guess in their eyes, they're like, oh, if this woman's... Like, maybe she thinks that's hot. Right, whereas if Archie was the one to present it... It would be different. It would be completely different. Punched in the eye. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Which... uh, Never mind. I was... We'll jump ahead. I'm going to jump ahead just a smidge, and we can go back later. Well, when she picks up this... What's the new guy's name? Nans. Nans. Obviously, he's a straight guy. He talks about having sex with women, and she they have a conversation about it. Okay, maybe he is gay for pay. But then something happens later that, that makes, makes you me wonder. Think, okay, well, maybe he's not so straight. straight. Maybe he is yeah. a little curious. But I anyways. thought that, too. So now we get some more X-ray footage of the two boys together. And then Anne and Archie are having a day of relaxing, and they get a call from the local inspector. They find out... I think his name, real name's Jean Marie, aka Carl, has been murdered. Carl was his stage name. Yes. Um, I guess there's not much more to add there. So. No, but they did say that he was stabbed repeatedly in the rectum. Yes, and that's what we. And when they ask her about him, she says that Carl was insatiable. Oh, so now oh. we're so we we're in the cops. We're in the we police are in the station cop. now. She go. She goes and talks to the two. C- the inspect I guess I think they're both inspectors, the ones typing up everything that they talk about and then the other the older Which guy. Makes these faces sometimes where you're like I almost thought maybe he's the into younger it. One I was thought like, he was oh, he knows her work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he's I got that, that theater. I got yeah. that vibe. And then also I could uh, other dude's face Yes. Trip me out. I think mm-hmm. he, that sunken eye that doesn't move. Like when he like looks down at the paper, that eye is still looking at her, and it yeah. creeps me out. Well, when I first saw him, I thought to myself, okay, is he going to be the red herring in this movie? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because the ma- you can tell, like, the guy with the mask on, like, there's something going on underneath, but you can't really tell, tell. you know? But then you see the inspector, I guess, and he's... Something's happened to his face, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I thought... Okay, is this like our red herring? But and then like, obviously not very interested in the case, mind you. I don't think they're in any hurry to find. But you know a what? Killer. They a gay I, porn star killer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I feel like this was 1979 New York, though. They would be massively homophobic. In Paris, they weren't. They just didn't care. So <laughs> this this whole thing inspires Anne to make a new film. They start filming with Archie as an eyewitness to a murder. And he is talking to two inspectors. The film at this point is called Anal Fury. Can I just, what the fuck kind of scene was that? Uh, look. You didn't like him typing on his typewriter with his with boner? his penis. I thought it was so, <laughs> first of all, I thought it was so weird. Well, Archie's dressed up 
as a woman. Uh-huh. He's dressed up and he's getting to look like, like Anne. Yeah. Yeah. And he's getting toe fucked. Yes. Like the whole thing was just it is it's, weird. It's very, <laughs> very strange. But he is. He's dressed up as Anne. I don't know if he does in this scene, but later on he's definitely got her green jacket on. And his hair is dyed blonde. It wasn't that color earlier in the movie, no. right? Right. So he's, he's supposed to be portraying Anne. Anne. But it's just kind of weird to me. Like, my first... Like, okay, whatever. You know, art imitating life. But I'm also like... Okay, I get you're a porn director and, like, you want to try to do something different. But this seems a little insensitive. Because they're using this guy's death to, as part yeah. of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, this is gay this porn is, is not known for based on actual art. events. Yeah, and a storyline. Like it's yeah. oh my god. My Which I mean I guess bus. Can you come fix them? <laughs> yeah, I can. Like, you know, like I will give her this. Very artistic director of these blue movies. She likes to think outside of the box. Which I can appreciate, but I do think it's a little insensitive. And not to jump ahead. But when it happens again, she continues to, to include do it. it. So again, I just feel like it's a little insensitive. And they bring that up later on. People are like, I mean, should you be doing this? She doesn't give a fuck. And she's like, I'm and I do whatever I want. <laughs> like, Seem, seems a it. little uh, Natasha Leone all about evil of her. <laughs> oh, very. Very Deborah. What was it? Tennis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah Tennis. Very Deborah. Taking the uh, scenes of people dying and turning them into movies. Exactly. So uh, Terry wants to be paid. Anne brings the dailies to Lois. And we find out here that the mouth of gold works for free. Yes. Works for free. And was in love with Carl. He says he was in love with Carl. Yeah. He's over there watching the, the film and crying. He has a... He has a heart. Heart of gold. Not only is his mouth gold, but his, <laughs> his heart. heart is made of gold as well. <laughs> well, look, you know, us chubby guys got to have something. So, Aww. well, and you know, when Terry's like, I got my money or whatever, I just thought, yeah, you want it because you want to go buy some heroin, right? Because mm-hmm. we've already, alo- like, they've already kind of given us that little hint already. So, yeah. you know, he's about to go buy some heroin. And in my head, I was like, and he's probably going to be the next to die too. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so, Lois goes for a walk. You never drink or do drugs. Right? We, we've drink, seen a horror movie. Lois goes for a walk, but is she being followed? Dun, dun, dun. Um, so, there's, there's kind of two scenes happening right here at the same time. Uh-huh. So, Lois goes for the walk. Is she being followed? We then see Terry... Shooting up in the back of the car because as Keith guessed, he went and bought some heroin. Mm-hmm. Lois goes into a lesbian club, and Anne is following oh, her. God, with that! Re- oh wait, what? No, that wasn't that part. I, you're thinking I, about the yes, yes, the later, yeah. the later club, the later club with the play with, with the. Bear. Oh God, yeah, that is crazy. We will get to that for <laughs> sure. But when she goes to the and she, they ask for a password. Mm-hmm. And she says, "Well, I'm Lois's friend," and they just let her in. And I think damn, Lois, Lois goes there all the time. A big damn deal at this <laughs> bar, and she does when she comes out. She looks great. Yes, she does. So I just wonder. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like I, I just wonder what her friend works there. The the her friend's name is Moon, right? Because she talks about her later on. So you just yeah. assume that's Moon that she's dancing with. That's doing the weird thing. Looks like she's, she's like, out there dancing by herself. Yeah. It's like a. It's like mirrors. It's like a Vogue. Club you look down. Almost. Yeah, it's Anne's looking down into a pit. It's not really a pit, but, but it's down. Yeah, but like Moon's dancing, and yes. then they all kind of gather yeah. around her, and then comes out Lois, and then yes. she starts making out with Moon, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. It was very. It was very like flash mobby, and then yeah, yeah. And, and then they're voguing. Like some of yeah. them are voguing, but. When it shows Moon dancing for the first time, it's, like, kind of from far away. And you see something, like, moving around. And she has longer, like, braids. But I just... The first thing that came to my mind was, does that bitch have a yo-yo in her mouth? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the yo-yo, like, moving... Anyway. I mean, Moon was feeling that music, though. Oh, definitely. So... Definitely. Oh, and then she was feeling Lois. Yeah, she she sure was. Lois, honey. 
So the I mean, bird. I blame her. Lois is really pretty. She Anyways. is. Uh, the bird shows up. The mask guy finds Terry. The crow. The crow shows up. The grackle shows up. The mask guy finds Terry, and Terry gets a dildo in the mouth. Okay, but that scene was weird. Obviously, like Terry is like he's out of his mind. He doesn't up. know what's going on. And he unzips his pants, and the dongs there. I I I put dong in my notes. I refer to it as a dong, <laughs> and he starts sucking it. But I was just like. I don't know. It was weird. How does he not? No, I mean, it's not real. But then also, he is really fucked up. So I mean, he just doesn't. sure. But also, I'm also questioning, like, because the first time we see this dildo and the retractable blade or whatever, how does this come out? It comes out what, the, the slit of the blade? penis. Well, no, like, how does he? What oh, is he pushing? I don't know. There's a button somewhere. Because I was trying to pay attention. Because it's like, obviously like in is it in his pants here? It looks like yeah. He likes to keep it because it just looks like he's blowing a guy. Like, yeah, he's it's got yeah. Because it he's kind of like staying in place. Yes. And I was like, where the fuck is this button? I wonder. <laughs> if you just have to like squeeze it a little to get it to come out. Oh, I mean, I guess like, maybe. Like, maybe if you're holding it, it's fine. But as soon as you squeeze it, like, maybe it comes out. Well, I don't know. I think we find out later in the movie why he has a dildo. Do we? Does no one remember that scene? Okay, I'll talk about okay, it later. Yeah, well, well, I'm very excited I'll talk about, about it later. Because I don't remember that. <laughs> okay. That was pretty brutal, though, seeing the blade come so through the back of his Terry neck like gets that. The yeah. knife come, shoots Which out the back of his you, head. Terry was deep throat on that thing. Because I kept wondering. It was okay, all. It was touching the back of that throat. Well, What's that I, thing in the back of your throat? Your courage hangy ball. Yes. What is that <laughs> called? That's what calls it on the Rugrats. Your courage hangy. No. Is that the Rugrats or no? It it's full house. house. Yeah. They call it, Stephanie calls it your courage hangy ball. Um, it was back there. Well, I thought because I was like, okay, he's going to town on this thing, and to me, I didn't really think the dong was super super. Like it just looked average length to me. It was just girthy, right? And I thought, okay, when the blade comes out, are we going to know? But I guess, I mean, he took that whole thing, which is why he the blade comes it out of his head. That must be a sharp blade. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess it comes out with some force. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, that's all I can think about. Oh. So Bean pissed off at Lois and makes her way back to the studio and scrapes something on that day's dailies. Okay. I just have to say, first of all, I feel like Anne's an idiot for doing that. Because if she's directing these films, she's more than likely paying for this film, which is They're not, not cheap reshoot at it. the time. Right? Because right? you hear about it all the time. We couldn't afford reshoots because the film is so expensive. And when she's doing it, it just looks like she's scratching it. And then later on, Lois plays it, and you can actually see a message. And I was like, now that does not at all look like what she scratched up on that film to me. No. <laughs> because it looks like she just took something and, like, was just scratching it out. Going to town on it. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't look she like write? she was scratching words. No, absolutely like, not. So, um, let's see. What does it say? You killed me? You have or? killed me. Yeah. You have killed me. I think this is when they when we find out that Anal Furies the the title of it's been changed to Homocidal. Homocidal. Well, Nan has Nan's has now replaced Terry, and is filming a scene with Archie in the phone booth. Yes. Yes. Yes, they jerk off together. And comes oh my God. sprays everywhere. Yeah, that was not like it's a hose. Shot. Like that was out of a water gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. I mean, yeah, that was, it was a lot. Literally and metaphorically. Yeah, so maybe that's when she says, so it's called homicidal now, right? Well, um, Terry is found dead. They think it's because he owes drug money. And then that is when... do they go to a bar? They've renamed the film Homicidal. Yes. And then they, they go to a bar. Well, yep. The next scene is the film crew goes to a local watering hole and encounters some drunk straight girls. And then a former mm-hmm. star, who is now trans, walks in with some other trans friends. And Martin. they get a job with Anne. Is that his name? Yeah, I think Martin. it was Martin. 
It was Martin, and but then later it's I have it. it to. <sighs> Misa. Can I just say these girls? Oh, they're annoying. Are and they're like bachelorette people uh, that you'd find out. No, I'm not talking about the straight ones. Oh, I mean they're annoying oh. too. I'm talking about the trans, the trans girls. Women. girls. Are they trans or are some of them just drag queens? See, I almost thought like I some thought they of were them drag queens drag. at first, but then I was like, well, maybe they're because some of them look maybe it's a mix more trans than, and then others just look kind of. I mean, like one of them drag. has a mustache. Yeah, like can, or peach fuzz, I should say, right? So that's why that's kind of what I thought too. I thought because I kind of thought just, the the queen bee of them. I thought she looked more dragish, dragish like to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways. I, was, I thought the girls were just so heinous looking. Like, I immediately disliked them. I didn't mind the Martin one. Well, no. The no, but that, his the three other ones, yeah. I was like, who's this Motley crew you're hanging well, out Well, and with? they think real highly of yes. themselves. Yes. Like, when they start talking about the the blowjob thing. Oh, and how much money And how much made. money. And yeah. she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, because Anne offers him 200 francs a scene. Well, I just love it how they're like laughing, like they're absolutely not going to do it. But then in the next scene, oh, guess who's in the porn that she's yep. directing? <laughs> right. They um, kind of just reminded me like they could have just been. I mean, well, I mean, I guess they kind of were they prostitutes? Yeah. 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 Yeah, they were whores. Whores. I mean, that's what they called themselves. That's yep. So, with the old crew and it's the a weird w- porn shoot too. <laughs> with the old crew and the new trans girls, they film the end of homicidal, and yes. the killer is revealed to be Anne yes. in the porn. The in the porn, Anne yeah. is the killer because Arch Archie's still playing her. I mm, guess because yes. he still got the trench coat on. There's this white curtain. This it's is weird. Goes through the curtains, and there's a bunch of sex scenes happening, and. I will say this is one of those parts because I, when I took notes on it, like I drew these little arrows, like there's not really any transition. It's just like scene, scene, scene. So it'll be like three scenes and they're, none of them are really re, like kind of related, but they don't transition is what I'm saying. It's just like boom, boom, boom. This was the, the whipping scene, right? The whipping scene. Yes. Where she's sitting on she him. She is spanking whipping and whipping ass. his ass. Yes. Oh, yes. And With then, the little cat of nine tails or yes. whatever. Yes. But then as soon as they're finished, like this scene, again, there's no transition. But this is when they go to the other bar with that weird-ass variety show. Yeah. I just bring that up because when I was watching it, I pay close attention. We haven't really had a lot of movies that have shown a lot of men, like, yet. I mean, there's still not a lot of penis in this movie. No, but, like, I mean, God, you could basically see his whole damn hole up in that scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mean, because he's on all fours with his ass up in the air, so. Well, at this point, Archie has a gun. He's teamed up with the detective, and they've given him a gun in the porn. Because they both shoot Well, because it's Terry, right? Is that? Isn't he the detective? Is he opposite him? Nans. Nans. That's right. Because Terry's dead. Yeah. I was going to say Terry's dead. Nans took Terry's place. In the porn. Yeah. Yeah. Terry got that dildo in his throat. Um, So. The variety show. They go to another bar. Yes. Anne goes to a lesbian bar and watches a bear skit. This. Oh, I see. You guys hate it. I love this scene. It was like Goldilocks and the mama bear is what I kept thinking. I actually really love this scene. I just wasn't really sure what was going on at first. And then it just kind of was like, it was just weird to me weird. and just kind of bizarre. And then, and then the bear like eats her. Well, I actually didn't mind the imagery of the scraping and the blood stuff. Like no. I kind of thought that was like cool, but just in general, I was like, who the fuck is going to a bar to watch that and watching something like this? <laughs> like they all, were, they all were really enjoying it too. Yes, I mean they were cheering and like. Well, I think it's kind of. I think it's an allegory for like a bad relationship. Like the lesbian's in love with someone that she shouldn't be with, and this is and in this it's a bear, and because she still wants her, it kills her. Whatever. I just thought it's. 
A Goldilocks and the Three Bears. I'm going <laughs> to, ass- Michael, I'm going to assume that when you say things like this, it's because after a fourth watch, this is what you've taken away from it. Yeah. But exactly. <laughs> after first watch, I'm not there. Well, I will admit, no. <laughs> it took me till the second watch of this movie for it to, for me to love it. To start to make sense. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but I do love that bear scene. So the crew goes to a rap picnic. Lois show. There's a lot that happens here. Lois shows up. A, lot. a storm blows in, and Misa, the trans girl that worked for the studio before, gets separated from the group, and the mass killer finds her. <laughs> the crow. The crow always shows up before somebody's yep. about yes. to get it. So you knew when you saw it, somebody and was And also, when it landed on, like, Lois's arm, she seemed so unfazed. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yes! <laughs> like, if a, a fucking black bird with a white eye landed on my arm just out of nowhere... Yeah, like, it would take me by surprise. Yes! Also, I Maybe don't... Maybe she's a bird enthusiast, too. <laughs> yeah, she's a birder. I don't really understand how... What is it? Nisa? Misa. Misa. M-I-S-I-A. How she got lost? I don't know how she got separated. Like, I everybody was together. It's, I know. It's like, where did you run <laughs> off to? <laughs> that was what I'd written down. I was like, how did she even end up in the forest alone? Like, I don't understand. Well, I just thought the whole storm coming was super... Like, I get it. Storms can be... Just pop like, up. out of nowhere. But, like, this was a little ridiculous. Right? It was, like, beautiful and sunny. There's no wind at all. And then all of a sudden, it's, like, dark. And then it's hurricane. And it's, like, fucking, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to the point where Lois is, like, we shouldn't be under trees and storms. Yeah. You like get struck by lightning and catch on fire or something. I don't remember what Well, said. there's so much that happens here because everyone's I there except like... for the trans girls then they show up yes. the ones gives birth to the to bottle, the bottle. Of booze. yeah I'm like oh my god well here's my thing lois came right and then she's got to leave and she's got to catch a subway and i was like girl you were here for thir- why'd you even bother coming to tell Anne that she was in love with her but they were no good for each other i get it but i just felt like that was a wasted trip i did really like the build-up to misa's death though like I liked the little spinny camera, and then oh, the killer would that. get closer and closer, and then it was just there. Okay. The three sixty, I love. Yeah. So I have to say this: I did like the three sixty, but I'll tell you when it lost me is when that stopped, and like you've got the rain coming in on them, but it's only like one little patch it, of rain. The rain did liter- look weird. Literally looks like somebody's holding a hose pipe above their head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was really raining. It was a it was monsoon downpour. season. I I. <sighs> unpopular opinion maybe but i literally wrote my notes i hated that so much i hated that scene the water looked stupid i hated it and then there was also a little sexual moment between the mass killer because they oh, almost yeah. kiss yeah i think he does kiss him. he does kiss him. yeah kiss misa oh god i missed that you were yeah. you were really caught on the rain I, no I, <laughs> the rain was stupid anyways and the famous words of Missy E, I can't stand the rain. I do love when Misa's in the woods screaming for her friends. I'm like, they were just right behind you. Yeah, Literally. That's the only lost. part of it that I was like, She's okay. blonde. She's not very smart. It does look like she's just lost. And I'm like, well, y'all were in a clearing, though. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. but I just, in my head, I just picture a group of friends. <laughs> and like one of them just running in the complete opposite direction and being like ha 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 and then turning around and everybody's it's just gone, gone. But they, that's what yeah. happened to her and I can see that happening but I'm like I mean it wasn't Why didn't that you run that time. way? Like, Why'd you run into the woods? If you turned around you probably should have been able to see them still Yeah, I don't know it was weird and then which also means that like Lois and Anne clearly they, they, they the walked too. off in a different direction yeah they did so yeah, that's true. They did. Well, they had a better sense of direction. Um, so Anne is seen driving in the rain and finds Lois, confronts her, violates her, and the mask guy is watching. Yo, Anne, at this point, has got to give it up. I, this is I started to get a little irritated with Anne at this point yeah. because I thought... Well, clearly she, so does Lois. She has told you twice now 
maybe even three times, that this is not what she loves you, <laughs> but it ain't working for her. David okay? Rose, this, I've told you thrice. I've told you thrice now. <laughs> okay, y'all had a great 10 years ish. Well, some of it was great, I guess. It's over now. It's over now. Stop finger blasting her in the alley. No. As she screams, okay. love me, love me, love me. She does not want you anymore. I don't know. I I felt like the scene in the woods prior to this, like, I just kind of wish that Lois just hadn't showed up. If she not yes, shown up, I, agree. I don't feel like Anne would have been in the place that she was in. It put, post- to put her in a tailspin. Yes. Like, it was a... It's like Anne came there with a point, but it was also a little misleading, and I kind of... It would have been better had Lois just left her alone. Yes. I agree. But yeah. taking off in the woods and kissing and whatever. like Leading true. her on, m- m- playing with her emotions. But, yeah. But to be fair, I felt like Lois did come, and she's like essentially to telling her like to say goodbye because she's got to catch a subway or whatever. Like she's... I don't fucking know. It's a weird relationship. It's definitely I mean, weird. Lois could be struggling, too, at this point. You yeah. never know. Like, maybe she... Because did we... Did she already see that one, like, scene where she, like, kind of paused on Anne's smile and stuff? And you, Oh, I do like that scene. Yeah, because, like, yeah. I, I did get that vibe at or that point. Lois and I thought it was... Yeah, I think we did, because she's yeah. editing. Yeah, It's one of those little tidbits they throw in while she's editing. Is that... Because that might be before yeah. this. I think Maybe that's, like she does it twice, actually. She does, because the second time is when towards the end. Oh. But, like... Because was that right before this? Because if that's the case, then maybe that explains why she was... There. That makes sense. She was her. feeling emotional over that, watching yeah. that. Gotcha. Cause, which I guess, you know, maybe that is why she remembers a different Anne than yeah. what we've... Because she sees the smile. Yeah. Anne's not smiling much these days. No. She's just drinking. Yeah. Um, so we get some more x-ray footage of the barn and a guy running out of the barn on fire. Um, Anne is completely blasted, drunk, at the lesbian bar. And the bear skit lady talks to her. She is holding a newspaper and Anne sees that Misa has been murdered. Um, she goes, it, go ahead. Cause this is the murder that like kind of changes things, right? Cause now she goes and talks to the inspector. Which we'll get to in a sec. Yeah. Well, yeah, she talks to the inspector, and then the younger inspector <clears throat> keeps souvenirs from his cases and gives, oh, yeah, her, yeah, and yeah, gives yeah. her a, a feather. feather that glows blue. Oh, my God. <laughs> it glows blue. It doesn't glow. She it, holds it up. It's because the sunlight is coming <laughs> through the no, feather. No, no, no. It is glowing blue. <laughs> oh, my blue. God. Don't listen to him. The sunlight is coming through the feather. Y'all, it's stupid is what it is. The sunlight is coming through the feather and emitting a blue light because of that. I mean... Once again, I just think this inspector is gay. Yeah, and he's tired of this killer killing off his favorite porn stars. Well, this is where the sunken eye inspector tells her to stop production. Everyone needs to go home and basically lock themselves Take a few weeks up. off or whatever. Yeah, yes. but at this point, they've wrapped. So, they should be finished with the movie. I mean, they start they start doing something else yes. later, but right now, in this moment in there's time... There's no production going on. There's no production. On. Yeah, they've wrapped. They just had their wrap party. Right? So, anywho. So, um, I didn't write this in my notes, but Anne and Archie are in the apartment talking about the feather, trying mm-hmm. to figure out what kind of bird it's from. Anne makes Anne ends up going to I don't know what the fuck this is. Some well, they open the yellow pages. Oh, that's right, and that's where we get the they find the bird expert. But that's how they find it because the sun shining through the yes the, the feather. Gl- look, the glowing feather glows on the page. <laughs> Do not that's listen to call. him. The sunlight's <laughs> coming through the feather. It's a reading light. Yes. Yes, it is. It's a reading light. <laughs> so then they go it's and LED. talk it's to... It's got an LED light oh on it. God. That feather has LED lights. If you ever yeah. wondered where LED lighting came from, it came from um, Shaladre Grackles. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it. Oh, my fucking God. 
Oh my god. Go ahead. Go ahead. So they meet. She meets up with this lady at I don't know what the fuck it is. Some Mayan temple. Well, it looks like an A-frame house, but it's like made of stones, and it has a wraparound porch. And Honestly, she, it's very pretty. And she meets her son, who mm-hmm. who knows instantly. She, he's the bird expert. Knows that it's a grackle. But wasn't that place within another place? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The place was called. Um, God, I don't. I'm no. I'm just butchering this. But it. Um. No. 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 Never mind. We haven't gotten there yet. Just kidding. She goes to Shaladre. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But so the expert tells her what kind of bird it's from, tells her the story about the birds and the forest. It's and then we find story. out he has some kind of yes disease. weird mutation. Okay, so the ancient birds, they're ancient birds. What I took from it, because it's a very long explanation, but what I took from it is these are ancient birds that absorbed death. So then they fly to the sun, the death burns off, and then they come back. And it blinds them. And it blinds them, sure. Um, That's why their eyes are white. But he does have a genetic disorder where it makes his hands look like a bird's feet. Yes. That's why he's a bird expert. And I'm just like, okay, sure, Dan. Like, nobody's hands look like that. Nobody has that genetic disorder. Have you looked that up? No. I mean, he looks like he's got, like, rooster claws. You never know. Well, where's Professor Xavier? Yes. Like, he would not. He needs to go to the... (laughs) School for the mutants. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. In a state. You two are where, horrible. Is it, is it New York? Where's that? Isn't it New York where the School for Mutants is? Or like Connecticut or somewhere? Yeah, it's somewhere yeah. up. It also kind of reminded me of like, what was it in Horror Story when he had his <gasps> oh, yeah. lobster claws show. or yeah, something? Show. Yeah. yeah. But see, that made more sense to me. That looks like a genetic mutation, but his hand legit looks like, I mean, it's got the nails and everything. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if he can fly. So we get some more X ray. He might be hiding wings under that big, big trench coat of his. Look, this movie's a little crazy, so I would not be surprised. Okay? We get some more X ray footage of two boys kissing, and then Anne makes her way out to the French countryside to find a forest. After she um, meets, she meets a mom. Oh my god, I totally butchered this. Hold on a sec. Yeah, she makes the dad. Anne makes her way out to the French countryside to find a forest. Anne stays with a dad and her adult daughter. The daughter takes her to the forest and she finds a graveyard and a lady sitting at the grave. The lady at the grave tells her her son died in a fire and his name was Guy. Here's my thing. She goes to, again, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Chaladre. Because mm-hmm. he, that's where these birds come from. And I just thought, is this going to help you find the killer, though? Like, to find a bird? You know what I mean? Like, it was a little far-fetched for me at the time. Okay, now it makes a little bit more sense. But she also found a goodbye letter from Lois. She does. Mm-hmm. Um, while she's sitting at the subway waiting for her... At the train depot, yeah. The ride to come. She finds that... <laughs> not good... At a subway, not at subway. Yes. yes. She, she's not she's eating her real turkey <laughs> sub. <laughs> Chicken bacon ranch sandwich. <laughs> um, she's got the goodbye letter. Um, what do we think about Kathy, though? His daughter. I was like, does he... She's she have the hots yes. for her? 100%. Is she just kind of been... Secluded. secluded and yeah. she doesn't ha- she's awkward i think a little bit of both i think she's a little sheltered but i think she's very curious about and another woman's anatomy yes i mean obviously they make it a point to tell us that she hasn't been to the city and like she went when she was a child i think she said like yeah. four or five years old yeah, when she he said old. daughter i was expecting some 30 year old to come out and said some 50 year old walks out <laughs> yes. with a she big is. old wart like, it's a birthmark. It's that's not, not a, a birthmark. It's like a mole. A mole. That's what it was. A big it's old mole. It's not a wart. She is not a witch. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but it was, was like, up by her eye, right? Yes, like on her nose. It, it was um. Look, it's in the seventies. Look, we've been the Family Guy. Mark. Look, if it you're a mutant, talking to you, if your mutant can have wings, then <laughs> Kathy can be a witch. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, okay. Um, 
and uh, share her uh, alcohol with her. Yes. Why does her alcohol look like a poison bottle? Like in all the old <laughs> movies where it's like the little bottle and it's like poison on it. Her purse isn't very big. That's all she has to be able to keep in there. That's that probably all she keeps in bottle there. Bottle whiskey. I would That's think. All she needs. And what does is, what is the she daughter say? It's 10 in the morning. Yeah. And she takes, she does take a pretty weak sip. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, Kathy's not gotten out in a while. She <laughs> took like she's probably drunk. <laughs> literally one little drip of whatever oh. she's drinking. Um, but it, it's funny to me because Kathy says, well, what are you doing here? You know, like trying to start a conversation. And literally, that's, I was like, yes, please tell me. Why are you here? Are you going to find the killer? Because this is where <laughs> the bird is. Like, I need to know as well. Why did we come here, Anne? Please tell me. Anyway. Well, that's where Anne goes into the forest by herself. Yes. She stumbles upon the graveyard. She does see a lady sitting at a tombstone, and then the lady leaves. Well, you know, before she finds a tombstone, she like chills on a and literally a for a little bit. Asks her, she asks herself, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> like, I mean, she doesn't even know. <laughs> Like, have you been drunk this whole time? Well, because at that point, you have to wonder. She probably is pretty blasted. You have to think that she's like, why am I here? Why do I like, care? What why I did doing? I go all these lengths yeah, to just sit out here in the forest? What am I even waiting for? Okay, look, I just, the reason why I think it's it's just crazy to me, because I think about it like this. Let's say there was a murderer killing, like, all my friends. And I just kept randomly seeing, I don't know, a bluebird. Like, it'd be like me going, okay, where do bluebirds originate from? That's where I'm going to find the killer. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Anyways. Well, but there's a feather at each death. And they glow blue. Oh my god, you and the glowing blue. Blue films, blue birds, yeah, blue, blue feathers. <laughs> so, oh my god. No one has blue balls in this movie. Well, well I bet. I bet. Gold, I bet <laughs> <laughs> no, he, doesn't. About he gets say. off from. I no, I bet he's got blue dip. balls for days. Because I mean, ain't none got, of them pleasing him. No, he's no. pleasing everybody else. Yep. And nobody. The likes only that. thing pleasing him is his pocket pussy that he's got at home. This is seventy nine. He doesn't have a pocket pussy. I'm sure they had something similar. Um. So this is where we find out that. Or maybe that, he's fucking the tailpipe oh from a red car. Y'all, I have to stop for a minute. Look, this is so <laughs> off topic. This is so beyond off topic. Off topic. But um, what? Where were we on? Peacock? Was it Peacock or Hulu? It was Max. Oh, it was Max. Okay, so many, 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 many years. Ten years ago, ago. there was a show called My Strange Addiction, and there was some sh- crazy shit on that show. Okay, well, there's a new season, and it came out this year, and on the episodes. Not all of them are, like, revisiting people. But on every episode, they at least revisit one person from the original. And there was a man on there. A 39-year-old man. I don't remember what his name is. I feel like he may have lived in Texas. Does that sound right? Yeah. Anyways, he had this red car named Chase. And he was in a serious relationship with it. This was back 10 years ago. So it showed all this previous footage. And it was like him kissing the car. And like caressing the car. It was so fucking weird. Okay. So then. Fast forward. Chase has died. Okay. He was in a (laughs) bad accident. And he was very upset about it. And when he talked about it. He got emotional. Because you know. You watch this stuff 10 years ago. You think. Oh my god. There's no way this is real. Oh. It's real. I believe him. He was. He loved this car, okay? It, it almost seems like, they don't say what kind of accident it was, but I think he took the car in to get serviced, and when they went to raise it up, like it fell. Like something happened, because he showed some pictures. Well, he has a bedroom that's dedicated to Chase. The hood of the car is the headboard, and he's got a blanket on it, and it's made of all these pictures that he's put together of like him and Chase, okay? So now he's got... <laughs> I just he kept calling it. It's is my luxury sedan. It was a Lexus. <laughs> that okay? was twenty years loves, old. Yes, he loves to talk about how it's a luxury sedan, bitch. It's a two thousand and three, and we are in twenty twenty three right now. So there's nothing luxurious about that Lexus anymore. Okay, and he calls it Lex, and he goes on dates with Lex. Okay, <laughs> I know where you're going date, with this. And he said, 
you know, I get licks, you know, presents just like I would anybody I dated. But instead of flowers, sometimes I'll take her to the gas station and get ethanol free gas. And that's when I was like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Well, he's bi because he oh, has yeah. three other, th- two other vehicles and he, a jet ski, and he, they're all boys. He did say he was like, "I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself bisexual." But he did say that. He said, "But um, maybe he mentioned something about being pansexual. I don't remember exactly." But if the car has like masculine, a masculine look to it, then it's a guy. So Chase was a guy. And he's got a fucking jet ski that um, he likes to wrap his legs around. Mm-hmm. And he's got, like, some sort of SUV. But Lex has, like, feminine qualities, so it's a girl. It was the weirdest goddamn thing I've ever watched in my life. And Michael was like, I bet he fucks those on the tailpipe. And I was like, I really hope not. Could you imagine? In between the I'm going to go see my brother, and then you pull up to his house, and he's got his pants down with his dick in a tailpipe. Well, it must be a fat dick. That's all I can think. Those pipes ain't that small. I mean, I wasn't really <laughs> thinking about that, but it's just... Unless he attaches a fleshlight to it. Now, that's next level. <laughs> Y'all, it was just so weird, okay? And then on the next ep- I'm way off topic. <laughs> on the next episode, there was a couple in New Jersey, and they didn't drink water. All they drunk, drank was their own urine. And at one point, uh. he washed a cucumber with his urine, and his dad, like, hey... Y'all, it is fucking crazy, and if you are really bored and feeling down, like, oh my god, my life is over, please watch this show. I promise you, you will feel better about the choices you have made in life after watching these people. And that's all I have to say about that. We can continue. Back to the crows. (laughs) Back to the original program. (laughs) One lady lady eats her cat hair. She's got five cats, and she eats their hair, and she licks them. She gives them back... I love my dogs, but that is like too much. No, oh my god, yeah, it was, I could talk about that. I could literally do a podcast just on this show. <laughs> it was it's crazy. Anyway, sorry, Michael. Um, so Lois has gone to the tombstone, and mm-hmm. the lady comes back and talks to her, yes. and this is where we find out the that it was mother. her son named Guy, who to me was. Because she talks about him being killed in a fire was obviously the X-ray fo- one of the guys from the X-ray footage we'd been seeing throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and don't they do that kind of weird X-ray scene where like their faces are like crossed over and like one's got the blind eye and the other mm-hmm. like looks normal, whatever. Yeah, something like that. Well, this poor mom's gone crazy. She talks about how she talks to guy every day and. He could still be alive because they never found his body. Yes. Can I be honest? This is where I officially started to lose interest in this movie. So, <laughs> Anne goes. Anne <laughs> makes her way back out of the forest, and Kathy takes her back to the house. The next morning, they leave. Kathy has live left li- left her a note and some flowers. And she takes a better swig of that alcohol too. When she, she does. Her, she she, mm-hmm. pretty she immediately gold. wants some of that alcohol. Yeah. Well, and Kathy's the one that tells her the big long story about Guy and yes. everything. Because Guy and Hikem. Uh, it was also her husband that Hikem. had died. The mom's, like, because she says Guy died, and then months later the husband died, and that was when the mom went crazy. Correct. You Did are they right. Did say something about his grave is there, but they just buried clothes? In his coffin. Was, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Because they found... Heichem, 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 whatever it whatever is. Whatever, yeah. in the fire. They did find his body. Yes. yes. Yeah. And this was 15 years ago, prior to when the movie's taking place. Um, they are filming a new movie called Hex Rated. While this is happening, Lois is at the studio editing. While editing, Lois notices a guy walking in the background of Homicidal. Mm-hmm. The power goes out there, and the power also goes out at Hex Rated. When the power comes back on... Jose El Hombre has been murdered. Okay, well, here's my thing. When Lois is watching that and she sees the person walk, like, that to me would not be alarming. Like, you're on a porn set. There's people walking around. Like, why would that alarm her so much that there's somebody walking? Because they had clothes on? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) 
they looked out of place. I mean, on a porn set, know. someone with a mask and dark clothes is probably going to look. Yeah, but you don't see all that. You just see a silhouette, essentially. Right? So. Yeah, but I mean, I if you're on thought, set and yeah, it's like but, white sheets and just some random I just figure, thought maybe because of what was happening. Yeah. It was, well, you, you remember when the lights go out first, it's the rats. Right. Yes. Because she gets very scared. She grabs a pair of scissors and... And she walks to the, like, the fuse box and there's rats in there. Two rats chewing on the wires. Um, she also then, calls Moon to come pick her up. Yes, Moon to come pick her up. But then the lights go off again, right? Don't they go off a second time? Or they well, go that's... out in her room and they don't seem to go off on the set. And like, It seems like it happens... Well, the set's in a... To me, it was in a completely different place because... Oh, okay. ...of what happens in the next scene. Got yeah, it. well, because... Yeah, like, because obviously Moon is taking her to, to the some set. place. Yes, 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 you're right. You're right. Which is also weird, though, because the power's going off there. Right. Well, we can talk about that. Yeah. I think it's just coincidental. The rats were chewing through the wires at the same time yeah. that the power is going off at uh, hex rated. It's... You know, I'm glad you brought that up because when, when I was watching it, I thought... Okay, she got in the car with Moon, but then she shows up at the set, and I was like, wasn't she just in a car with Moon? But that would make sense if the editing room is some, maybe they're at, like, maybe wherever they're shooting this is at a different location. Yes. Yeah, okay. I thought at first it was the same place, but it- Because it is earlier on. Yes, but it obviously cannot be in this scene because of that. So Moon does take Lois to the set. Jose has been murdered at this point. Um throat slashed hell jose is my favorite character lois has made her way to the filming locale and sacrifices herself to save Anne as the mass killer attacks her she sure does i will say i didn't like that that lois sacrifice yes i didn't either i was like i mean she actually probably was my favorite character well and i just kept thinking like don't get me wrong like i know Anne is our main character but at this point i'm like Anne has got some problems. Like, maybe it's just better that she go be with Jesus right now. And <laughs> you, I'm just saying, like, she just seemed to have a lot of issues. You know what I'm... So... She seemed a little lost. Yeah. <clears throat> but maybe, I don't know, maybe Lois's death changed that. You know, we don't know what happens after, after. But maybe, maybe that changed her outlook on life after losing Lois. Yeah. Or it could have made her crazier. I don't know. So, a despondent Anne is now in a restaurant. Afterwards, she makes her way to a theater that is screaming homicidal. Yeah. Um, so, when you go watch these movies, I know back in the day you would go watch these movies and all kinds of shit would happen in these theaters. Was that typical that like the movie would end, like, just keep playing it over and you bought a ticket and you just stayed as long as you wanted and they play them over and over and over? Because it seems like she's in there for like three or four viewings of it, right? Well, at one point, I thought they played a different movie. They do. Oh. They do. They do. That but, comes that comes up in my notes here in a little bit. But Nans comes in. And when he comes in, I mean, the movie's been going. And then right. it starts again. So it makes me think, Yeah. oh, well, maybe they just keep... Maybe you buy one ticket and you can stay as long like, as you want. Yes. They play the same movie all day, come and go... See you in literally, and go as you please. Later, literally, literally <laughs> come and go. So after the first screening, Nan shows up and watches the second screening. A guy asks him if he's the former porn star. I don't know how you pronounce it. Fraud. Fraud. He says no. We notice a burn guy with a hat and a scarf concealing his face sitting behind Nan's. I don't have anything to say. Well, I just Anne thought it was... Drunk, drank I just thought it was really... to sleep by this point. Gross. The guy that was, like, coming on to him. I was like... That is so ugh, the ick factor to me. But I guess if you're going to a theater and you're walking in and everybody's fucking jacking off in the seats, like you probably don't. Yeah, you should know what to expect. But I, Nans is just sitting there like starstruck at himself. Yeah, he's enjoying the, the movie. fact that he's like on this big screen. Mm-hmm. But then he goes exploring. Mm-hmm. Nan makes leaves and goes to a bathhouse next door. Is it? Next I, door, or is it in the theater? I thought it was connected. I, it kinda I think it's gave, connected. It kind of gave me like peep show vibes. Yeah, like, like it's definitely it's definitely connected. There's like a back. You have to pay three dollars for a flashlight. Which yep. nope, I'm not walking into like so, like look. 
I'm not opposed to walk into a bathhouse where I can just see what's happening. But if I have to have a flashlight to make my way through it, I'm not doing that. Yeah, because it looked like, I mean, it reminded me of like being lost in a sewer. Like it was very narrow, right? It just looked like bricks. Like just... What? Yeah, What's you turn that? a corner with that flashlight. You're not going to know what you're going to find. Yeah, well, no. exactly. But that's why I thought, okay, maybe Nan's is a little Why else would he go to the curious. bathhouse? Yeah, exactly. Um, so Anne is still sitting in the theater, and they start playing, as she says, a moldy oldie. It's called Spunk and the Land Alone. Anne realizes that the plot is similar to the story that is told to her about Guy and Heitchum and that everyone involved in the film is being murdered. Was well, Froud in this movie? Yes, but yes. Froud looks like Nance. Right, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying, but Froud yes. is actually in this movie. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. at this point, it would she just started putting two and two together that Nance is the only one left. Yes. Yeah. Which I will say, too... I actually did like that scene where they show Anne and all the dead ones like sitting like oh, around her. Uh-huh. I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, her nightmare? Yeah. Yeah. Because at this point, all of her nightmares have been x-ray. Or that we've seen at least. Mm-hmm. Anne makes her way to the connected bathhouse and finds Nan's about to be attacked by the burn guy. He's the killer! He's the killer! <laughs> uh, the burn guy uh, takes a hostage and goes back to the theater. It is then revealed to be Guy. <clears throat> the gay theater moviegoers are not there for his shit and attack and kill him. And that one twink seems really super invested by all of it. Well, he says, D- you get off on killing gay guys. Mm-hmm. And then that's when they go after him. <sighs> so why is God the killer? I, I don't really know, like... Because there was a part of me that kind of made me think, are they trying to, like, make me feel bad for him? Like, when he was, like, looking at Nans and he was like, I chum, I chum, or whatever guy's name is. Not guy, that actually is his name, but the dude that his boyfriend in the movie, right? Yeah, that's all confusing to me. Well, and I was just like, so... I didn't know if I was supposed to be sad for him. Like, cause he lost his lover. And that's kind of like, he was like reaching out to Nans as like, was he actually going to kill Nans? I think so. So, but explain- I think that he saw this porn after what happened to him. And it is similar to his story. Well, do you think maybe Anne is notorious for turning? Stories yes. I think that she probably read a story or something somewhere but if this is an older movie to us she's just finding out about this story right so then are we supposed to believe oh maybe she's known this whole time the story it could have been it could have been a coincidence or something but i think that it was it it was similar to his life story and it either set something off to in him and he was jealous and uh-huh. everyone that was in that movie needed to be killed and that brings me back to which obviously none of you guys saw which i'm shocked during one of the x-ray footage films uh-huh. the father oh. cut off one of the guy's oh, penis yes he grabs it and just chops it off and that's why he has a dildo oh well, i definitely did not I, see well, that. so i did see that now that you say that but i didn't put two and two together that that would be the reason that he had a like a prosthetic essentially yeah because he can no longer get off because oh. he doesn't have a penis anymore his father cut it off Yes. Okay, so well, that makes so sense. talking about the possibility that Anne had maybe seen this story and took it upon herself to recreate it, right? Is that kind of like what we're thinking? Yeah. So it just makes me wonder if Guy thought that maybe these people, maybe they had something to do with it. It could have been. Or. And he was kind of like out for revenge on these people. Or maybe he just thought they were exploiting his story. Or maybe it's homo repression. And he. I think it's probably a little bit of everything. Because like, you know, obviously he's been traumatized significantly to not be homosexual. And maybe these movies just 
make him realize that like it's sad for him yes so then the bird shows up as guy is dying and we see more x-ray footage of guy and hikam's story and i think that's where we get that they were two boys that fell in love and their father his father found them yes and chopped off one of the guy's penis and start started the barn on fire with mm-hmm. them in it so we get an epilogue, a Greek porn scene. Anne sees Lois. Lois disappears. The sound slowly stops. The lights keep dimming. Archie and Anne smile at each other, and it's the end of the movie. I guess I just don't... If that is the case, I guess I'm just a little confused as to why when Anne is talking to Kathy about the story... Why didn't she like why, she knew about it? Yeah, why it doesn't register with her that, oh, I have a movie that sounds very similar to... Maybe she's so drunk. Like... See, that's kind of my thing. I'm like, if you knew about this... Like, she might not have known that it was Guy and, like, that was his mom. She might not have known the, the people involved, per se. Like, maybe that didn't yeah. register. But when Kathy's talking about it, obviously... You remember this movie. You just said it when it started. You were like, oh, an oldie but a goodie. They should show these more often. Or whatever. Mm, I don't know. I don't know either. I just feel like if you had directed a movie and you knew... like, I just feel like when they were having that conversation, it would have seemed normal for Anne to be like, oh yeah, I remember this story. But that never happens. Right. So I don't... I don't know. I'm a little confused about that myself. Well, and here we are at the end, which I mm-hmm. thought was the end, except for that whole long, like... Unnecessary epilogue. Like, porn oh, scene. F you. I love, love this scene. Where like, epilogue? Where, like, Archie's, it. like, walking around, and I like... I love the song that's playing. I love how the song just slowly stops. The lights go dim. They smile each other, and it's over. I, I like the fade out. I will say that. But when it first started, I thought that it was going to be one of those things where, like, the credits, like, roll through a scene that's playing. Yeah. That's where I thought we were going. And then I was like, oh, no, we have, like, a whole other like porn that's being like filmed or whatever. Yeah. But now I guess it's kind of like essentially maybe she has changed her ways maybe. because it kind of gave me like, so now instead of like making light of these terrible situations, it's almost like she's making a movie that's kind of like gay angels in a way. That's kind of the vibe that I got from it. So instead of like showing these grisly murders of gay boys or making light of those murders, she's like, well, let me do this. Like, kind of like sweet like innocent looking well it wasn't innocent there wasn't any anything innocent about what the guys were doing in the movie no. No. but it wasn't as like graphic and <laughs> i can't get over michael saying f you oh. <laughs> i love it I will stick up for this scene 100 percent. i love it i think it was totally unnecessary well the only part that I was kind of like, like I mean, because talking it out loud, I can get by with it, except for when she like sees Lois over here on the side and has like a moment. I know, I, Lois, go back to where, you, go back to heaven. Leave, leave this poor girl alone. alone. <laughs> Just leave. Her I think alone. that was her saying goodbye to her, like letting. Well, good God, Lois she go. said bye to her like four times in this movie. <laughs> I was about to say Lo- they had their moment. <laughs> Several I think times. this was Anne letting her go. Oh, okay. I got you. Finally. Yes. This is the first time the whole movie Anne is sober. Yes. So I'm assuming she's sober. Anyways. Well, I also think it's fitting that it's Greek. They're shooting a Greek scene. It's yeah. what, everything that happened was a Greek tragedy, basically. So there we go. Okay. I can respect your take. I'm glad you love it as much as you Honestly, do. I'm glad that you've seen it more than us because I can respect your takes on it and your yes. theories on it because i did not get some of the stuff that like you, you got not. but you hearing you talk about it makes me be like okay well i mean i guess i can like see that it puts things into perspective a little bit more so. it does make it a little harder for a first time watch 
like a foreign film that you're re- I mean because there is a lot of dialogue in this movie and it is hard to kind of keep up with because I found my like I, like I said so many times there's so many times I deposit to like write a thought down because I didn't want to miss any of the dialogue or what was happening um there were even a few times I think where I was writing notes and then I, when I looked back and I was reading the dialogue I thought I missed something can you go back like 10 seconds you know so I don't know I feel like maybe if I wa- watched it again, I might have a different outlook on it. But I don't want to give away my score just yet because we're we, not there yet. We're not there yet, and we've got Michael's favorite segment coming up: Harvard right Theater. We do. Are you excited about this one? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of dialogue. So yeah, Mike, tell us. Um, well, does anyone have anything else they want to say before we move on? Or we can talk about that in our final thoughts. Yeah, I'll just... I mean, I'll give my stuff, like, okay. kind of as a... All right, well, go ahead and set the scene for us, Mikey. Um, So there's, like, a lot of really fun scenes kind of in this movie. I mean, obviously. But, you there know, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think that we wanted to be, like, moaning and having sex on the podcast so um i did choose kind of a more i really chose it because i kind of think that it sort of alludes to like what the movie's about and if you're listening to this and you kind of like maybe you want to go watch it after this maybe after you hear our fantastic rendition of the scene (laughs) it'll be like okay so this is kind of like what's supposed to make the movie make sense is like this Mm -hmm. that's kind of where i went with this okay Okay. so um it is the scene where Anne is going to chaladre forest um in search of the bird gotcha so we have Anne, kathy the dad and guy's mom okay all right now i don't no, I mean, obviously, I think Kathy probably has the most dialogue in this scene. Well, her and Anne for sure. Okay. But like, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give. <sighs> mm, I'm probably gonna take the dad and guy's mom, just because there's four and Kathy has a lot of dialogue. So between the two of y'all, would be Anne and Kathy. Mm-hmm. Do either of you have a preference? I have no preference. Me either. Okay. I can do small town girl. I can do high, <laughs> highly prolific um, porn director. Whatever I need to do. Um, <clears throat> but can you do repressed lesbian? Sure. Okay. I can. I mean, look. I. I'm, I'm here for whatever. You're you're a well versed actress. <laughs> um. Okay. Well. Then I will let you, you know what? No. Yeah. Well, I'll let you do Kathy. You can be Anne. Okay. Okay. We ready? Yep. Greetings, maniacs and madmen. This is Dr. Gang Green, physician of fright and Nashville horror host. Coming up next is everyone's favorite segment Horror Fried Theater. Grab your popcorn and refreshments, pull up a slab, and get ready for the madness. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. At a bus stop, Anne reads a letter from Lois telling her goodbye not to seek her out. While reading the letter, a man comes up and interrupts her crying. Unperez, someone reserved a room for you at my inn. A, a Why certain- is <laughs> A okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna, was that British? You're Kathy's dad. I'm going with it. Go. A, a certain Archibald. It's a bit hard to find, so I thought I'd come and fetch you. I'm Mr. Ven- Veneer. Do you know what your name is, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, because when I said it out loud, I thought Veneers. Like, oh, okay, yeah. And then, anyway. In the kitchen at Mr. Veneer's, Anne is sipping coffee. Mr. Veneer walks in. This is my daughter. She'll take you to the forest. Kathy, this is Miss Perez. Anne and Kathy are both walking outside towards the forest. Have you lived in Paris long? <laughs> yes. 
I've only been once. I must have been four or five years old. I don't remember much. Just a few details. The crowds, the smell of the metro, the festive feeling, the hustle and bustle. A woman laughing to herself on the champs elysees says, oh, no. That's it. <laughs> a little girl's blurry dream. I've thought so often of returning, but I can't leave my father. You understand? And nods and takes her drink out of her bag to take a swig. Oh, you may read. You what, perhaps? And hands the bottle to Kathy to take a drink as well. Now? In the morning? She takes a sip and points towards the forest that Anne is in search of. Here we are. Thank you. Don't worry about me. I'll find my way back. Anne takes off into the forest alone. The forest is vast. It's easy to get lost. <laughs> I'd be happy to come with you. I'll manage. Walking through the forest, Anne sits down next to a tree, takes a sip of her drink, and contemplates why she's here. What are you doing here? Anne walks further into the woods. It's getting darker, and she spots a cemetery. A woman sitting next to a headstone gets up and walks away before she gets to her. and goes to see the headstone the woman was sitting at. It's for a boy named Guy Farr. Surprising Anne, the woman returns. Are you a friend of Guy's? Excuse me? Of course you must be. Your clothing tells me you're from the big city. She comes to sit with Anne next to the headstone. Take care of him when you see him. Promise me God speaks to me. No one believes me. <laughs> but I know at night, wherever he is, he thinks of me. And the flowers I bring him change colors, change positions. It's our secret language. <laughs> Anne reaches for the flowers on the headstone. I'm afraid for him. Tell me what's happening. I beg you. How's my son? Calm down. You must know. You're his friend, right? He's such a good boy. He had no luck, that's all. So little luck. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> leaving, leaving the forest, Anne sees Kathy in a car waiting to pick her up. You're lucky my father usually <laughs> won't let me drive it. Did your excursion go well? Yes. Did you make it to the river? I only saw a cemetery and a weird lady who hangs out there. Guy's mother, no doubt. Yes, that was the name on the grave. Guy something or other. Did you know him? Guy Far, we all know each other here. Poor woman, she's insane. Poor little guy, a dreadful story. What happened? Guy and one of his friends, Hitchum, died in a fire 15 years ago. They were in a barn. <laughs> <laughs> they were in a barn that caught fire. No one knows how. The strange thing is, Guy's body never found. Only Hitchum, some think Guy killed Hitchum, set fire to the barn and ran away. No evidence was ever found. It took Guy's father two years to get his son a spot in cemetery. He put, on, he put only clothes in the coffin. It's so sad. <laughs> oh my God. It's so sad, and he died a few months later. That's when Guy's mother lost her mind. Every day she goes to the cemetery <coughs> with flowers. <laughs> they never found any trace of Guy? Not a thing. It's a mystery. The old timers believe the forest is haunted. That guy is still <laughs> there somewhere. Kathy stops the car, and Anne goes to get out but not before Kathy asks for another sip of her drink. and smiles and exits the car. Insane. So this is Dr. Gang Green saying goodbye and thanks for joining us here at Horror Fried Theater. See you on the next episode of the Horror Fried Podcast and be sure and join me every Saturday night for Dr. Gang Green Sanitarium. Saturdays at 9 p.m. on Nashville's NECAT Channel 9 and simulcast on the Kneecat Roku channel and drgangreen.com. And as always, remember to stay mad. <laughs> NC. I can't do French, but I can do whatever. Cockney? Like, Cockney. <laughs> Cockney. <laughs> I don't well. even know where I went with Guy's mom. I well, when you did the dad, I was like, oh, okay, I can work with that because it sounded a little British, didn't it? It definitely first? did. Yeah. I, I literally, I was just, I, don't, I was given like Irish, Scottish, something with guys' mom. All kind of I don't even know. I, can't, I mean, I can't do a French accent, though. Other than just wee-wee. Yeah, wee-wee, baby. <laughs>
It's time for our final finger licking thoughts, y'all, here at Horror Fried. We rate our films using the heat scale of a Nashville delicacy, hot chicken, on a scale of one to five, no spice, mild, medium, hot, and Nashville hot. All right, Michael, since you love this movie so much, I'm definitely going to start with you because I'm dying. I'm just dying to know <clears throat> what you give this movie. You started with me last time. Yeah, but you are the one that, like, this, this was your... This was your pick. It's very queer, though, is it not? No, it definitely is. Oh, but... it's the gayest shit we've had in this season. Well, there you go. It's, I mean, yeah, it probably is. It centers think. around gay porn. Yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> you getting a fright? It was Buddy. Oh, God. He, like, sneezed on my leg. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. He just wanted to say hi. So yes, it's no surprise I do enjoy this movie. I will admit that I enjoy it each time I watch it more, and it makes more sense to me every time I watch it. I do give this movie a break. This is a foreign film, so you do kind of lose things in translation. You do get... They do think things differently than American horror films do. Um... I don't know why things make more sense to me when we watch these movies. But you like giallo films, right? I do like some giallo films. I was going to say, the whole genre. Y'all mentioned that earlier, but y'all never talked about it again. Yes, this is a French film that's inspired by Italian giallo films. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to us, you know that I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't say I'm not a fan. They're. There's just a few of them that I like, and the rest to me are a little too much. Um, but you do, you do. There's more. I mean, you definitely like more of them than I do. Yes, I will be. Yeah, I do yeah. like. I do like. Of the three of us, I probably have watched and like Giallo a little more than the rest of you. Um, I don't know. For me, there's a lot that I love about this movie. I love. I do love the X-ray film that's interspersed throughout the movie. I love the various camera work that's done, like the 360 in the forest. I Knowing giallo films, the bird thing doesn't surprise me at all because that does come up in other giallo films. Um, there's other things that I mean that I think of when I think of giallo films, but... Um, I also love the score. The score is by M83, and I'm sure, I don't know if Mike, you know M83, but M83 is a fairly popular electronic band. I don't know where I'm going with this. I like it. I'm going to do a four. And frankly, I don't give a fuck what you guys think. Oh. I mean, nobody's well, look, judging you, and you went there. <laughs> I am going there. Look at his Gone with the Wind improv. Literally. <laughs> frankly, my dear, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, hold on, I need to collect my thoughts because I tend to come to these and I don't honestly sometimes even have a rating until we've talked about it at the table. And then my opinion kind of like changes as I talk it out loud and Mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. I will say it was pretty damn low after watching it by myself. After sitting here and talking about it, analyzing it, putting things together a little bit, it's gone up. But I'm still kind of right in the middle. I'm going to be like a three. I didn't hate it. I don't know that I'd watch it a lot. But there were things that I did like about it. Honestly, at some point, I remember thinking, this is very like Boogie Nights meets Hellbent. Like, that was kind of, like, the vibes that I was getting. Which, and I mean, I, well, I love Boogie Nights. And then Hellbent, I enjoyed that as well. But I, it was not bad. We'll just leave it there. But I'm a three. I'm right down the middle with it. I'm very much like Mike. Because when I watched it, like, in the middle of watching it, I'm not going to lie to you. I was ready to give this a flat out two. Because I did not enjoy the later part of the movie. I liked where it was going at the beginning. Because it felt like, okay, this is like a little slasher movie. Mm -hmm. 
But then it took a little bit of a turn when we're finding out this backstory, and I don't know that I enjoyed that as much. I almost feel like I was watching two different movies. Like, the first part of the movie was one thing, and then the second half was something else. So that kind of... That second half of the movie lost me a little bit. Um, But yeah, I mean, there were some... I mean, again, like... I thought, oh, maybe I'm going to like this. But then when it started going off the rails a little bit, I was like, oh, here we go. Here's the giallo part of it that I'm not going to like. But, um, <sighs> this one's hard for me. Well, you got to have a rating. Uh, yeah, I know. And I know Michael is going to be like pissed off for me for the rest <laughs> of the fucking week because I rated this movie low and he loved it. Um, but honestly, I'm kind of, I'm just going to go with a solid three on this one. I, what, did, what did you give All About Evil? All About Evil? Um, do not even compare this to All About Evil. It's completely different. All About Evil is like a horror comedy. It's supposed to be over the top and campy. This is not... Um, I gave All About Evil a 3.5. So not far from... No. I, Look, I didn't hate this movie, but I definitely didn't enjoy it. And, I will, I, and I'm giving... My three is mostly coming from us talking about it a little more. Now I have a better understanding of what I was watching. So, story-wise, I'm like, okay. I can give it a three. But there was... Don't get me wrong. There was some stuff I hated. I... So kind of piggybacking off of you a little bit because I was very much kind of the same when she goes off to Shaladre or whatever I was like okay here we go what are we doing yeah but I didn't mind how everything tied together in the end like I kind of liked the the fact that like I mean yeah sure the x-ray vision kind of thing was like obscure and you had no idea what the fuck you were seeing but by the end of it, the way it all pieced together, I wasn't wasn't mad about that. I just the it is a little bit of the stretch of like the bird thing and like all of that and whatever. Like that's it was a lot. I would have rather had the I would have rather had them stayed in Paris and killed off more porn stars and just tried yeah. to figure it out. Like maybe her and Archie go off and they basically become like their own like well. I mean, kind of like how they were in the porn. They were yeah. like the detectives that figured it out. Yeah, we got to figure like, this out. Like, I almost think that could have been a nice twist to have where obviously she enjoys making these movies that are like, you know, based off actual events. Uh-huh. So, like, I think it would have been kind of cool to have her and Archie almost like the movie gave her inspiration to become a detective and then they kind of figured this out like together i think that would have been cool but clearly that is not what happened i'm not whatever that person's name was that made this movie so well i think for me I, like i said i enjoyed the beginning of it i just towards you know that second half of the movie i didn't like i almost just wish kind of like you said that we got some more deaths and it was kind of like an elaborate, like, more of an elaborate slot. Because at the end of the day, we only lost, what, three people? Three? Two? No, four. We lost four. But Jose was so quick. Like, there wasn't much to that. Where you had a lot of build-up to the others. I just feel like I would have... But we all know I'm a big slasher fan. So had it been more of a full-fledged slasher, and maybe this was just some homo-repressed crazy guy, like, I probably would have liked that a little more. I just didn't... Like, hellbent. Yeah, but... Like, when when they're in the movie theater and you see the eyes, so you know he's in there. Like, that would have made sense. Like, okay, he goes to these movies, so he's just killing people that he sees in these movies. Like, that would make sense to me. I don't know. But, I think one, th- like, one reason I'm giving it a three and not something lower is because I did think their performances were really good. Pinkies. I think Vanessa Paradis did a really good job as Anne. I would say probably... Nah, well, I don't know. I'd say, like, probably one of their better performances this whole season. Like, I thought she did a really good job in that role. Um, and I really liked Lois's character as well. 
a lot of the guys were fun. Like, Archie was a fun character, you know? Um, even though, like, <laughs> the Mouth of Gold was a little ridiculous. Like, I believed him. Yeah, well, they they did a good job of, like, giving these kind of B characters a little bit of a... Like, ability? Yeah, like, a little bit of heart to them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Knife and heart, so there they are. Yeah. Yeah. Also, is it kind of, like, symbolic that it's called Knife and Heart and that's how Lois goes? I yeah. think so. I think so. And it was like a knife in Anne's heart to see her go. All the symbolism. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and rate the Horror Fried Podcast and catch up on all our previous episodes on your favorite streaming service. Links are available on our Instagram page. Once again, we'd like to thank our friend Dr. Gang Green for hosting Horror Fried Theater this season. Y'all can find him on Instagram, YouTube, and at his website, drganggreen.com. Now it's time to swap spit and hit the road. Join us next time as we discuss 2020's Fear Street Part 1, 1994. Very excited for that episode. We do have a special guest joining us. All will be revealed. Until next time, remember, if I wasn't a whore, I'd be a fortune teller. Bye. Bye. C'était le dernier plan du tueur homo. Bravo.